Hey there, Boils and Ghouls. Welcome to this week's episode of Hollow Weekly. Nick Rollins here with... George Healy. And this week, we are back to Hollow Can We Go with 10%. We're almost finishing Hollow Can We Go. I know. Some of the some of the percentages, there wasn't... Well, there wasn't anything to choose from. Right. So we find ourselves here at 10% with... The Unborn, 2009. But before we get into our review of The Unborn, make sure to go over and follow us on Spotify and subscribe and give us a review on iTunes. Jumbie wants to be born now. All right. So 2009's The Unborn. Yes. Give us give us the deets. What's it about? <laughs> All right. Here's a small synopsis of the movie. Um, this I got pulled this for Amazon, so it's written kind of cheesy to sell the product. Enter a world of unrelenting evil as terror finds a new form in the unborn from the producers of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Not <laughs> the co-writer of The Dark Knight comes this shocking supernatural thriller about a young woman plagued by chilling dreams and tortured by a demonic ghost that haunts her waking hours. Her only hope to break the debilitating paranormal curse is an exorcism with spiritual advisor Sendak, Gary Oldman, see what lies beyond the doorway of our world in the nonstop nightmare of the unborn. <laughs> sounds better than a 10% on Rotten Tomatoes movie, doesn't it? That sounds like a, that sounds like a 99% film on Rotten Tomatoes <laughs> right there, boy. That's right. I love All right, that. let's so I so here's the thing. I am going to I'm going to be honest here. I actually really really like this movie and since we started How Low Can We Go, we were like, what, 60%. We've gone through like almost every percent. We've seen tons of movies. I was fearing them getting worse and worse. And I was eyeing this from far away when we were like 20% and like, this will be not terrible, mm -hmm. right? So I was kind of looking forward to getting here. You had never seen it before. No, I was for some... Or you never even heard of it, honestly. No, well, I had heard of it. But for some reason in my head, I kept confusing it with The Brood. Yes. So I was thinking, I was like... You know what? It's been a while since I've seen a, a woman lick blood off a baby. So we'll do that for the show. But why is that 10%? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And then when you when we loaded it up, I was like, wait a minute. I've never seen this yeah, before in my life. This looks way newer than... This, this is way newer than, than, than what I remember. Movie. Must be a reboot. Um, yeah, totally. And and I'm going to fight for this movie. I think it's... I So I have this new uh, test in my head about uh, how I feel about movies when I leave them. And this... The, my test now is, do I feel like I wasted all of my time, some of my time, or none of my time? I feel like this is a, a almost none of your time wasted movie. It's not great, but I'm going to argue for it. But anyway. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was and we'll get into this more and more, but just, uh, it was, oh, actually, let's let's do a 60 second review. Let's do it. All right. So let me just uh, pull up the old clock arena here, because uh, if there's anything we value here at Hollow Weekly, it's integrity and the integrity of actually going to 60 seconds. I brought up my calculator. And efficiency. Not my clock. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> I, don't, I don't need to calculate anything. It is E equals MC. This e movie sucks. <laughs> All right. <laughs> on my marks. On my set. Here I go. All right. So uh, this film is uh, a lot better than what I thought. When I thought a 10% film, I thought of like the eight films to die for. Like, you know, you know, the films are just sort of made quick and all the cheap. Uh, it's not that. It's a lot better. The cast, I'm, I'm actually a little disappointed in the cast because, like, they have Gary Oldman, Idris Alba, and I forget the two boyfriend, the main girl, and, and her friend. They're, right. they're kind of. Oh, Dad Yusman, we should say, because she, yeah, she's the star and she actually does a pretty damn good job. She does a good job most of the time. There's right. a few scenes where it's like, ah, but right. for the most part, pretty good. Uh, and there, there's some, there's some, uh, actors in there from Dexter, the the eye doctor who asks her if she's known this crazy thing, which we'll get into later. Yep. And then the guy who played Dexter's dad, who was right in Mortal Kombat. Uh, yep. I would have, I wish there would have been more of like the home shit going on because like her dad's like almost never at the house while she's getting possessed and tortured. That right. was a little weird. Yep. Um, but overall, super solid film. If it, if it's it's the kind of film that it's on TV, you'll watch it the whole way through. Six seconds done. Boom. Wow. Nice. Yeah. Not bad. Not terrible. Not 10%. Not 10% by... Like that would indicate, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. So my 60 second review, you're going to hit the, you're gonna hit, hit you, your you calculator. Count, count down. I'll <laughs> count down. I'll go. Ready? Go. <laughs> two All plus right. two. So I, I don't need 60 seconds because I'm actually not going to review the entire thing. You covered it. I'm just going to fight for... 
what I think stands out from it, right? Because here's the thing. When I first saw it, it kind of sat with me and stayed in my head. I hated the some of the, like the boyfriend and her best friend. I mean, I, I will get into that. I thought they were terrible. That, I, the way it was written was terrible and they were super annoying. But, you know, what sat with me was it was, there were some, where I feel like they tried to get really creative with some of the scares, some of the designs of the scares and some of the cinematography and the way the scares were set. And they sat with me in the way that Nightmare on Elm Street, like the surreal sequences can sit with you, you know? Like, so it's not perfect. Like Nightmare on Elm Street 3, that puppet sequence with the, where he's got his veins, like that's super scary visually, not the best effect ever made, but I feel like stays with you. And this movie has moments that stay with you. Oh, I was so hoping you'd go over a minute. God <laughs> damn it. You ended at like 56. And the whole time I was sitting there like... I know because I, I was watching I, you waiting for me to fail and go over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I can see it. I, I was trying to nod. So because it's it an audio face. podcast, I was nodding going, yeah, keep going. Keep talking. Trying to bait me please, in please, please, please keep talking more and more just so I can shit all over you that you went over a minute. Nope. And God damn it. You, did, you, you, did you time yourself on your no, laptop I just to not. fucking... Nope. Ooh. Nope. No, All right. you're just, that, that's, don't play poker. Yeah. Your face well, no, I did play poker and I lost, <laughs> but I have a great time every time doing mm-hmm. that. Okay. Yeah. So we, so we both really enjoyed the film. It's not. Well, let's talk about this. So, so like, you know, instead of walking through the whole movie chronologically, basically the worst to me, the worst chunk of the movie is it's a really strong opening. Yeah. The opening sequence is, is kind of scary. And it, the movie shot so well. It's beautiful. Shot, yeah. especially that opening sequence. It's just like you feel like you're in good hands, and, mm-hmm. and it's really eerie that you got like upside down like dogs, like that reminded me a little bit of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, and you got like some freaky stuff happening with buried fetuses. It's it's kind of, it's very effective, right? Yeah. And then the whole next twenty ish minutes of the movie are just abominable. <laughs> I'd say I'd say thirty ish, maybe. I because okay. like, because it, it was pretty much like. We pause it at the halfway mark. Yep. And then that's where it started to get yep. a whole lot better. And, and talk about so, like some of the problems of it. Like I had a big problem with her the, boyfriend, more egregious, was the best friend who I thought was the, one of the most annoying movie characters ever written. The, right? the, the French, like the, because it was it was written, who was it written by again? The uh, David Escoyer. David Escoyer, the guy who uh, co-wrote the Dark, Dark Knight. Yeah, yeah, which, which Dark Knight, great movie, mm-hmm. but I don't expect David Escoyer to, to know like, I mean, I couldn't write like a female friendship because I'm a guy. <laughs> <laughs> there might be a problem. There. And so yes. the the, right. the friendship was just really kind of weird. It was weird, and you you know because think about like the philosophy that sort of gets dropped on you in the Dark Knight from the Joker. So there's some like moments where you're in a college like classroom in this movie, and all of a sudden you're getting taught like bleak existentialist philosophy and it just doesn't fit it's weird and then and it comes at you immediately it comes at you immediately time to marinate like really right big like these concepts and then the boyfriend god bless him and that poor actor (laughs) you saw him trying to process the shit that he was being said to him and he was like but we talked about we were joking about there's actually a moment where the 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 heroine of the movie she goes to consult an eye doctor because something really weird and kind of cool is happening to her eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very like the Fox Exorcist show, what they do with like the divided eyes when they get possessed. Mm -hmm. And it's very cool. It's a really cool effect. But she goes to consult this guy and he comes back after the test and he's like, he says something like, are you familiar with genetic moiasism? And she's like, no. And I'm like, oh (laughs) shit, you're not. No No human being is familiar with that term. That was the the forensics guy from Dexter. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he just drops that on her. Like, are you familiar with it? (laughs) (laughs) Like, no, he is, despite the fact that I get taught that in my college all the time. No. So it was weird because there were, there was this, all all this exposition. Like, I feel like the plot got re explained three different times in the first 30 minutes. That. Stuff yeah, that really, did. Really. Although you pointed out, like they're in the Home Alone house, she lives in like a. Yeah, like like she it looks like she lives with Papa John. Like they got that <laughs> moat. They got like a moat. <laughs> they got twenty acres in the backyard. <laughs> the McAllisters mo- live there, but <laughs> it's just this huge home. It's an amazing house, and I sort of like some of that setting. So they could have done a way better job with what was going on in that part, but. Uh, when you get around halfway, the actual scares, they stop trying to explain the story to you, which, by the way, this movie is basically the Jewish exorcist. Yeah. yeah. And and it's, it's 
kind of weird, but they tell you like a lot of backstory about Holocaust and whatnot. And that's, it's, it's all tonally weird because you're in a typical college with people joking around and then you're whipsawed into this really serious <laughs> plot concentration point. Concentration like, camp. Like, so that's a very strange, the fact, and I got to give like a credit just to almost the bravery and sanity of it, right? Mm-hmm. Like you wouldn't think that would be a, <laughs> like the way they would have gone, but once they try to try, once they try and fail to explain that story to you, they get to the scares, and that's when it gets good. Yeah, the weirdest the the the, the thing that felt this, like strange to me in the film was I well first I liked the cinematography a whole lot. Mm-hmm. I thought the score was good. There wasn't anything that stood out negative about it, so I thought the score the score did its job. Mm-hmm. So what you what you see visually looks good. What you hear sounds good. But the editing was a little strange in yeah. some in some paces, and, and and the pacing of the film definitely felt a little weird, especially because so like they 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 they're in they're in the they're in the classroom they're listening to something about the universe and the the the, the digital and and believe it or not just real quick the, one of the they say the dumbest thing in that classroom but that's literally what gets a callback at the very end of the movie it's the last line of, of one of one of the characters where he's like falling forever so like because the, the professor says that shit in there so literally they took the weakest moment of the film and they're like hey we're gonna save that for a end call we're gonna save that for the ending for the death of a character <laughs> right, yeah, you a, don't give a shit about unreal that. but good um no the pacing was just really weird so they're in the classroom talk, l- talking about like you know this big universe idea how mm-hmm. it's never ending blah 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 uh and then the effects were kind of cool in that scene like i thought the effects and the were, were great throughout the whole film. Every time she like phases in and out of consciousness, yes, it I looks love that. really cool. It, look, it actually looks a little bit like Jacob's Ladder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was trying to think of what else it reminded me. There's a, there's a few paintings where it like, looks like everyone's melting mm-hmm. a little bit. It kind of reminded me mm-hmm. of that. Like it looks it looks great. Yep. But it goes from like that and then they go home and they fuck and then after after they're done, they just start <laughs> talking about the universe and then like her dead mother. <laughs> yeah, it's... And it was just kind of like, well, wait a minute. I don't know what kind of... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Well, it's because it's the writer of the Dark Knight. He can't wait to get back to that shit. You can tell he loves talking about it. He, he was loves, just like, what? What, what kind of pillow to... talk are the kids doing these days? <laughs> How, how's the dead mom scene? Is that the kids? It's unreal. Uh, so that that felt kind of weird. And there was a few scenes like I don't want to like nitpick it, but like right. there, there was a few scenes like when you get like the jump scare, the first mirror jump scare. Yep. Once she gets scared and it cuts to her on the floor, the the editing of that. Felt. You're right. That was really weird. She was in a totally weird, like she could not have physically gotten where she got from the last time we saw her. Yeah. yeah. So, so it, it was, it's, it's a little nitpicky. Sure. I don't think it ruined the film by any stretch. Right. Uh, but that was, it, it was those moments where I was like, well, that's a little weird. I could sort of see why some people had issues with it. Yep. Yep. Uh, but totally. for me, the editing and the pacing was probably, well, the writing, uh, but the editing and pacing was probably the biggest. Yep. Biggest totally. Thing. I, I have a feeling that, that, the people, the creative forces behind this, they've they found a really interesting story in some of the back history of the whole De Book and Kabbalah mythology. And you could tell they were into that and they wanted to lay the groundwork for that and sort of explain yeah, yeah. it. But unlike most people who get an idea for a movie like, like you know, Wes Craven gets the idea for a nightmare uh, on Elm Street from someone who died beat and they were trying to stay awake and they were just having bad dreams. They felt like they were being stalked. And he turns that in a movie, but like he explains that in, in like a minute and a half, and then the rest of it That's is it. like Freddie doing his thing. And this one, they were like, "Yeah, this is kind of a confusing concept. Let's explain it for thirty minutes." <laughs> <laughs> you got time for a flashback? Okay, <laughs> let's go back. Let's go back to the forties. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of rough. That was a rough ride. But basically, the whole movie turns when. She convinces Gary Oldman, who plays the rabbi who's going to help with the exorcism, the, she convinces, sort of starts to convince him that there's a real thing happening to her, and then she starts to defend herself. And we go into that mode where it's it's like like anything, like the Losers Club and It or Stranger Things, where you got to circle the wagons, and then whoever mm-hmm. who's on board and who's not on board. And I always love when horror does that. Like so, I feel like it sort of did that right. Like. The friend, her friend was doubting her, and then she sorted it out. She's like, "I totally believe you." And her boyfriend was like, I, "You know, I, yep, I'm the dumbest character alive, so I don't care. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll just accept anything anyone says." So then everyone's kind of circles the ragons, and she goes into the defense mode. And I love that, like even when Fright Night does it or whatever, like get the garlic, get the whatever. But in yeah, this yeah. one, it's like smash the mirrors, do the ritual, you know, like whatever. And then 
you you the j- jumbie <laughs> oh lord the villain starts to come after her and at that point that's when i felt like it really picked up the first scene that i thought was actually terrifying was uh the i guess that was her that was her grandmother right or who mm-hmm. was that her grandmother mm-hmm. the the scene where she gets got yeah that yep. that whole scene yep. was where the guy's like turning his head upside down yeah, and chasing her like a backward spider he's walk. Doing like yeah, doing the yeah, the spider walk. I thought I thought that was super unsettling and, I, and the effects looked great. Yep. In it too. And, and the way he was walking was super unnatural. We compared a lot of it uh like vibe-wise uh to Silent Hill. Yes. Like the the creature-wise like totally. it, it had that scary unnatural looking Absolutely. Feel. And and unnecessarily long flashbacks, which is a chronic <laughs> problem with the Silent Hill franchise. Yeah. Too. So they have like mini movie flashbacks. But that's but that's the thing is like, you know, we did we you know, we just did The Gallows and you know, we went a little harder on that film mm-hmm. even though we were mostly glass half full with with most films. Uh but but this film's ranked lower than that and I thought that scene alone made it a better film just yep. because they were able to really drive home. Like it ends with a cheesy jump scare, but yep. that's, that's okay. Even though his name's Jumby. Yeah. So, <laughs> Jumby, Jumby with his, which we're going to get to is a, the one of the worst names for a horror villain ever. But I thought his design was cool. It's hard to do creepy kid. Right. Yeah. And it's and either you, too cheesy. Yep. Or like, well, it's either just too cheesy or it sucks. Totally. Yeah. And what was cool about this was, by the end sequence where they're doing that whole um, the exorcism uh, in her negative place, um, <laughs> the, the, when they have her strapped to the gurney, and whatnot, when that when when the villain arrives, I just love the way he played it. You know, we we give so much like thought and credence as horror fans to the nuances of some of the silent killers, like whoever plays Leatherface, whoever plays Michael and what their mm-hmm. body language is and what the big difference is. And there's like literally right. Countless forums of, you know, Nick Castle was better than this and that, you know, mm-hmm. like whatever. And, and you don't think about the body language of like the way less iconic, <laughs> like the, like these kind yeah, of, yeah, yeah. but I'm telling you, go back and watch that exorcism scene at the end. He comes in with total confidence. I don't know if it's the way they shot it or he's just a good actor but that kid, he came in and he was like, I'm going to kill all of you and nothing can stop me. And yes. he was like a tiny little badass. And his design was great. And the way he carried himself was great. He totally sold me. And I thought it was a really cool sequence. Yeah, you know, what's funny is actually uh, when we went and saw Recall in Time, mm-hmm. I thought the little boy who was the villain, mm-hmm. I, I, it, it, I thought it wasn't that, that great. But right. I'm th- now comparing him to... A bigger budget it should be theoretically way better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. but but still, his name's Jumby, so <laughs> can't, can't, don't go too far. Um, yes, I guess I guess the the key to because I was also thinking of uh, the the little boy in Pet Cemetery. The trick to a good kid don't is just don't creed, don't, yeah. don't talk. Yep. Yeah. I mean, he totally. talked a little bit, but <laughs> but just don't just if you have a child actor who's supposed to be a villain, just you know keep it minimal. Keep but, it minimal. Yeah, but and also don't over cheese it up. Like they didn't make the mistake like they did with fucking Robert De Niro in uh, Angel Heart, where they gave him those cheesy yellow devil eyes. Like, oh yeah, yeah. Like they're doing a lot of eye stuff in this one, but it all looks great. Like it, yeah, it, yeah. all those effects when her like she actually looked really creepy. It was almost like the eyes from um, from the Celine from Underworld, like a very similar to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. in a much more realistic setting, and which made it almost creepier. It was really interesting. So yeah, yeah. And the whole religious thing always kind of it always just gives it a gives it a kick. It, well, freakiness. it gives it a kick unless it torpedoes with with, with the world's most ridiculous horn, because we should talk about the Exorcist scene kicks off with. I don't. I don't Gary Oldman pulls out like a. It, it begins like beer fest <laughs> or something like that. Like it was amazing. They a horn, like, and they planned, they planned the extras in a gymnasium, right? Like they, they get together at a battle plan and they're like, it's in between. Workouts. Yeah. Where were they? Like, the, was that a gym? Must, yeah. I thought that was like, like a, a community gym, right? In the church, maybe it was in a church, but right. yeah, like we're at the church or synagogue or whatever it would be. Right. Like, it was right. It was, it was, it was, it was weird, man. It was, the whole way, but I thought it was like. Well, you killed it. You were, you were thinking of like, what's the worst place? And like, you just kind of went like. Well, oh. when I, yeah, what happens is they go, they go, they ask her because that's different. What happens is while they're battle planning, they're like, we're going to, she's like, are we doing this at your, at your 
uh, at your uh, church, and the and your almost like no. <laughs> he's, he's like, like well, no, of course not. I don't shit right. <laughs> right, exactly. He's like, so we got to go someplace where you have really negative associations. So she picks where her mom killed herself. That's where they went. Oh, uh, okay. right. So it's like this decrepit, rundown, like set piece. It's just like the set piece at the end of it follows. You find it in an abandoned big space yep. and like whatever. So they go to that space, but when when she was when they were like they turned her and they go. What place do you have really negative associations with? <laughs> and you just bust out Ross Dress for Less. <laughs> and you bust out Trader Joe's parking lot, which, which is apparently where we would have our exorcism. That's where we would go. Like, like if you asked us. We They're would. like, what are those people doing? <laughs> uh, Nick needs, Nick's getting an exorcism performed on him. Right before he Today. stops in for some lentil soup. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Well, the, so the only other thing that really bugged me about the film was uh, the intro to Idris Alba. Uh, really? Well, because and here's the thing is it, the way it played out while we were watching it too is mm-hmm. they're in a gym talking. Gary Oldman's there with his little you know satchel off to the side. Mm-hmm. They're talking to the boyfriend who's still trying to wrap his brain around the endless <laughs> universe. And then our and then our and then our hero. And I go, why are they meeting there? And then you right. go, and then you said you'll see. And then the the then mm-hmm. our main character says, what are we doing here? And then Gary Oldman says, oh, we need some backup to mm-hmm. like talk to Idris Alba. They couldn't have caught him after practice. <laughs> like, <laughs> There's urgency, Nick. There's a possession happening. Yeah, gotta, I know, but like you got to move on that shit. You could have called him on the phone. It's 2009. <laughs> like it's not like I don't know. I thought that was really weird. It was. I don't know. That was. I mean. I mean. There. There are actually a lot of weird or unnecessary or just. I think that's the thing about this movie. It's just off. Yeah, that's right? the thing. It was off. It's off. It's like a. It's it like, wasn't It's bad. like the way Picasso paints human beings. It's just off. Like, yeah, you can see as a face, but it's not right. Like I see. Like like after they explain it, I go, yeah, I, okay, <laughs> okay, let's do it. Well, yeah, and that. So, but one of the things that's a flaw of almost all exorcism movies that I think was great in this one was well, the, the, the way it played out was amazing. Was you don't realize until you go up against the devil or the de book or whatever the case mm-hmm. may be. That you, what does what Sean Connery say in The Untouchables? Don't bring a knife to a gunfight, right? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't, it, the devil is has some abilities, right? He has some powers. Who knew? So who knew he, but the Dark one, Lord. But one of the, you would think would be like really low tier for the devil is like a stiff breeze, a leaf blower, right? <laughs> and they bring everything they bring to this exorcism is like loose leaf notebook. <laughs> Everything they need to read. They're like, in the Lord's name, you pray. And you hear, mm, and their papers fly. They're like, shit. And they're running around trying to grab them. Shit, we should have got a stapler. We, we need that. We need to read that last sentence and the papers are flying away. Like, dude, go digital. Like, <laughs> Get a Kindle or like a, Holy shit. a stapler or tape or anything. Was, yeah, that was really bad. But we, we can't let this pass. We, to me, when you're judging a horror movie, not that this has to be the only criteria, because I will die on this point that it doesn't have to be, but you have to assess whether it's frightening or not. So I think there yes. are really frightening, unsettling scenes, and I don't want to let it pass that when Idris Elba gets possessed, he's terrifying. He looks like he's a force to be reckoned with. In this movie, he breaks through walls and he's like and that whole ex- the way the whole exorcism goes down, because they kind of weave together, and it's kind of a complicated pro for this movie, but, but they I mean it's whatever. It's they kind of weave together a lot of the things that were happening. So her eyes get worse and she starts hallucinating, which we've been getting flashes of the whole mm-hmm. time. And, and, and as the, as Jumpy starts telekinetically making things fly and throwing it, the whole exorcism starts to break down. You can see that like, that's when the boyfriend sort of comes through. So they were late leading up to that question. Yes. Is it a platinum dunes staple that at least once every film, a character has to be standing up against a wall Two arms come from the other side and pull you through. It is because that happened. Remember that happens in Texas Chainsaw. Of course, (laughs) it does. And you know, I don't know if you are even allowed to make horror movies anymore, where the character, the villain, doesn't pick you up with one arm and push you up a wall, and then you got to show your feet kicking. Because I was like, this movie's so creative, and it's so like, I mean, it's trying to be original. It wasn't doing old standbys. It wasn't doing old timey. It wasn't doing the old the slasher. It wasn't doing the possession like typicals right like it was trying to get creative with what it was doing and then it comes back and does that that, that like <laughs> like michael myers invented in 78 or whatever and i was like oh you had to didn't you but it doesn't matter because i'm telling you like not only was the design of the kid good but when he starts 
And and I thought one of actually the the uh, I don't even know how to describe it, like the prettiest lines of dialogue I remember hearing in a horror movie in a long time is when Gary Oldman's character uh, turns to her and says, "Look, we're going to be doing this exorcism, and this demon can can sort of move from body to body." So he's like, he's like, all hell's going to break loose and he's going to try to find any port in the storm. And I like that line, like any port in the storm, but he's warning her, like he's going to show up in other people. Yeah. And he possesses Idris Elba and then he possesses her boyfriend. And every time the demon jumps to another person, it's kind of horrifying. Yeah. Like the, what they go through sucks. It looks painful. <laughs> right. It looks painful and good. Like the effect mm-hmm. was good. And, and, and whatever. it also had the, there was another line I, I really liked with, um, oh, it was those glasses give me wood. <laughs> We did not like that. One. <laughs> that was terrible. It was fucking terrible. This film has a lot of ebb and flow. Was, to it. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Can we talk just real quick about the? Because I, I I just want to memorialize it forever. The elimination of the horrible best friend character because that was a great sequence. So was, the so the kid talk about the kid. It from was the almost middle. like it felt almost a little bit like uh, don't look now. Dish, right? You know, you, right. Open the, you open the door. There's just like a little little kid there, which is what the kid from the middle. Is right? the kid from the middle? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And that stab, slow stabs, always. You didn't me, expect that, did you? I, I didn't expect it. Right. It was. It was. It was really well placed, and it, it reminded me of the 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 stab from the end of Ex Machina. Yes. And that's just a really uncomfortable where you're just having, she's literally just having a conversation with him. She's like, what are you doing here? And he just like bloop, thump, reaches out and like, it's done. She's like, there's a, no resistance. Eviscerated. Oh, it's just, yeah. But anyway, he stalks her and the way the camera moves and the panic as her friends are trying to go around the house and it's a nice rainstorm and the way it's shot is cool. And he's stalking her up the stairs as she's bleeding out. I mean, all of that was just excellent right and then and then the boyfriend just like completely bitch tosses the little boy into the corner <laughs> totally. i thought he was gonna i thought he was gonna murder that little boy <laughs> i was like oh jesus don't do it he's just he's just a boy so, that was pretty amazing and and i gotta say i think one of the things that i didn't give a lot of thought about um in terms of like this movie because you wouldn't expect this movie to do something this well but I think there's an art to to that stalking camera move. Like yeah, yeah. John Carpenter was so good at it, right? Like he could put it in the right place and then you feel like you're seeing from that point of view and then that's that stalking move is just like that's there's a skill to that. But I've seen a hundred horror movies for that one where they try to duplicate that and it, they're not good at it. The camera's just not in the right place or it doesn't move at the right speed or like I don't know what it is. Yeah. But this movie has that. So in the opening shot it's really, really low down to the road, like kind of the kid where the kid would be height, mm-hmm. and she's jogging, right? And it's it kind of it goes in on that glove, and then there's a later scene where she's running, and you see her from way off, but the camera's at that danger point, way low, mm-hmm. like you know she's gonna run into some other shit, and it's just the way that he was moving the camera to do those like. I'm going to put you in a position where the bad thing is, but not show you what it is. And then the character's coming at you and you know, they're headed for trouble and you're kind of sitting where the trouble is. Mm -hmm. So it kind of gives you that you want to warn them and wave them off, you know, feeling. And that placement was just fucking perfect. It was really good. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie going into the film. Like I always, I'm always glass half full, but there's something about like, having platinum dunes attached to it. <laughs> yes. You think of Michael Bay and you think of like, you know, they're always very over the top, even though I really love the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. For yes. some reason I was going into this and part of me was like ready to have like a bunch of just shit happen. Well, like, you, yeah. I mean, all you know about the movie going in because you were thinking about a different movie. So at the <laughs> last second, all you know about the movie is it's platinum dunes. It's 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. Mm-hmm. Right. And you had never really seen it, which means you've managed to go 10 years without seeing a movie, which means no one ever came to you and go, you, you should watch this record. <laughs> so those are, all, those are all you know going in. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. But, 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 you know, that, that said, I, I if, if, if I, I would actually probably right now, I would recommend, I'll do, I'll do what other people probably should have, <laughs> probably should have said, Hey, check this out. I, I honestly don't think it was that bad. I think the fact that it's 10% is uh criminal. Even, well, let's rate it. Even though I say that, let's do it. Well, I'm not going to give it a lot of it. <laughs> That's fine. I'll rate it. I'm going to give okay, it Okay, hold on. I'll, okay. Let me guess yours. Yes. Well, we kind of already told each other. Let me see if I can, if it's guess or if change or anything. I don't think I told you. Go ahead. You agree? You, you said 80%. 
No, <laughs> I didn't. No, no, I no didn't. you thought I was going to say 80%. Yeah, I thought, no, I was like, it's going to go to 80% when Gary Oldman shows up on the screen. And I was joking. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. I think my real rating for this movie is, in all fairness, I think I'm, I would have to give it like a 65. I think mm-hmm. it's good enough to be fresh. It's not great. But here's what I know. I've seen a lot of generic horror movies in the last two years. I've yeah. seen a lot of Flatliners remakes and I've seen a lot of Bye Bye Man shit and I feel like this movie took a chance on a really big subject that like movies probably shouldn't be like taking on as part of the horror thing without like a lot more thought yeah, and yeah, yeah. somehow miraculously pulled it off with some interesting characters who I sort of cared about at the end but the, the main thing was sometimes a weakness is a weakness. Like sometimes you just ruin something when you like literally the, the platinum dooms nightmare on Elm street remake. Although I, 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 the cast that you, how you can't recast. They did the best you could recasting Freddy as you mm-hmm. can. Right. But everything else about that movie, you just like is bad. It just doesn't work. So, you know, that to me, when I'm looking at a movie, this movie, I'm thinking to myself, it, it's, it didn't go to formula and the fact that these things that were a little bit off actually worked for it because the off thing gave me an uneasy vibe, which is what a horror movie should do. Right. So the tone was off. It's kind of like, it's kind of like if you get, if you're overtired and, and it's like three in the morning and you turn on a movie, sometimes it's scarier than, than it is when you watch it in a different yeah, circumstance yeah, yeah. because you're off, <laughs> right? Your alert, your alertness is down and you're like, whatever. And this movie sort of did that for you. Like I felt like it would go from like serious discussion to low comedy, to jokes about someone having wood to talking about like, you know the the. It's like it's like the perfect perfect film. Like if Blockbuster was still around, yeah. It's a Friday night. You rented this film. That's a you're not going to be disappointed. So I was actually. It's funny in my head the whole time. I was wanting to say sixty five percent, but but here's here's how I wanted to yes. do it. So I wanted to say the first half of the film. Uh, I'm gonna do it too. I'm gonna, I like. This. I'm gonna, I'm gonna cop see, out a little bit. I about see where this you're film. going. I like it. First half of the film, from start to about. I'll say 40 minutes, mm-hmm. 42 minute mark, mm-hmm. 20%. Okay. The setup for it is repetitive. Yep. It's not that great. The acting's a little whack doodle. Yep. But it's not it's not 10%. Totally. Past good. past that when Gary Oldman shows up and you get the actual first scary scene at the nursing home, then it bumps up to like 60, 65%. I'll say 65 just to make it easy. Totally. But then, and then it jumps up to 65%. And uh, the other thing I thought about this film was, you know, it's almost it's almost a decade old. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of other horror films that date way sooner than a decade. That's and, a and this isn't one of them. In fact, I was thinking about Final Destination 5 and how you find out at the end it's a prequel to the first one. But they did a really good job of hiding technology and all that other Great shit. Job, yep. And I felt like this film did the same thing. Like, there wasn't a whole lot of, like technology or cell phones or people doing this that and the other right so i think this film in another 10 years i don't think it's going to date as hard as the majority of the other films that's come out in the past two years it's a great point so i think this film is still going to hold its value uh in in a a decade from now it's a little bit timeless go figure there you go (laughs) (laughs) so that's i totally agree i think that's a great way to put it (laughs) easy all right so now as much as we love the film yes we got it. We got it. I keep wanting to call him Bagul, but it's not <laughs> no, Bagul. It's not. It is. Oh my God. He's coming up though. Oh, what the fuck? I forget the villain's name right now. Jumby. I wanted to see. I'm a little, I was glad I forgot it. <laughs> and now I'm back to the disappointment because I remember that Jumby <laughs> is the name of the villain in the film. Yes. Okay. We got to, let's talk about Jumby. Yes. Why? Well, so, yeah. <laughs> you said, you said it was important. You went like, when I found out, I was like, Jumby, you're like, it makes no, sense. No, I misremembered. I must have like, there was no reason there was why no, his name was Jumby. Oh, was it was no. because that was the, the, the dad. Well, the what, dad what happens the is nickname. she's a twin, which she didn't, Odette is a twin, which she didn't know. And then her dad tells you her, her, your brother died. When in, she's in college in and then she's room. heartbroken that her yeah, which is brother the, she never knew died. Right. <laughs> she says she was a former twin, which I don't think you can resign from that position. But anyway, so the, so the, he, she goes to the dad. Dad, you know, he's like, it. The, the, your brother is not a real brother. Like, you never even knew him. He never even had a name. And she's like, 
You didn't name him? He's like, no, we had a nickname, though. His nickname's Jumby. And then that's <laughs> not explained. <laughs> and Jumby is not a nickname anyone has ever had for anything, ever. Jumby wants to be born now. Yeah, I... Uh... But what it put us in the mind of was I wanted to... So we, we're, we're considering rolling out a new series for the podcast or some kind of segment that I'm pretty excited about where we identify um, under, uh, under like talked about or undiscovered horror sub sub genres, right? So there's a sub genre of horror of horror movies with villains with ridiculous names, right? There's a lot more than we thought. <laughs> Cause you have, you have the thought. conversation. You, you go, you immediately start from the top and work your way down. You can yep. Michael, Jason, yep. Freddie, exactly. Chucky, Lever exactly. Cracker, Pinhead. So and let's then, do it. We're going to rank the Jumby in the, in the all time list of horror name, villain names from good to bad. So go ahead knock it out. Like you love all the top names, right? Michael, Freddie, all that works for you. Well, I mean, at this point I can't not like them. Like, right. like they, they've been around too long, <laughs> but none of them sound inherently ridiculous, right? Nothing. Aside from what our significant other said about pinhead being too on the nose, we, we, we later, <laughs> we, 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 we were talking about it. That's not his official name. That is a fan right. name given right. to him. It that came would, to be his name. It but, came to be right. his name, but yeah, that that would be the most ridiculous, right? Uh, the one that's on one, the nose for you and of what, the top, Mike. Of the of the top. So list. you think Leatherface is a name you can take seriously? I love leather. The name okay. Leatherface Fair because enough. it's it it makes it makes what he does an art. <laughs> <laughs> that it's is like, such a good point. Like if I had to compare it, it would be like a what do you call it, a sommelier or what? what it's, right, it's, no, yeah, yeah, it's totally. like a sommelier. Like right, right. like I'm a Leatherface. Leather face. <laughs> I I make masks out of the flesh of human beings that's a fucking great that's (laughs) that's so good all right so the majors obviously none of them had ridiculous names so so we know we know jumbies fall short of the majors and even if you go to b list i would i would consider that like pumpkin head right i love that sure uh i don't want to say predators b list um I was thinking. I'm just thinking of Stan Winston. <laughs> Predator, I think's great. Well, I have a list for you. I want you to okay, tell me go. if you think Jumby is worse or better than these. I'm gonna. I can tell you what. Go ahead. From what we talked about before we recorded, we mm-hmm. knew that somewhere there's a scale of Jumby to Bye Bye Man, <laughs> right. and then there's Bye Bye Man are, being these, the worst. These are going to be the and the best probably being either like Michael Myers because I like the alliteration and it just gives you a chill. Oh, I meant on the scale of just bad. Right, right. No, yeah, but oh, I mean oh. the scale of all-time names, right? So oh, okay, from top yeah. to bottom, Bye Bye Man would be literally the worst the name worst. anyone's ever conceived of for a fucking horror mm-hmm. movie. And then the best is probably either Michael Myers or I'd say Hannibal Lecter. I just love the sound of Hannibal Lecter. Mm-hmm. I don't know why. And in the middle, just for reference, yes, Bagul. Okay. It's one that grew on me. I was like, maybe because you know they're calling him Mister Boogie. Bagul. Like it just sounds like <laughs> it does sound like a Bagul. It sounds a little threatening. Bagul. Anytime you got to drop your voice, it's so yeah. it's threatening. Bagul. Bagul. <laughs> Bagul is right. Right. All okay. Right. So so that that's our our sliding scale, which I really like. Now we've mapped this out. Yep. So We know where Jumpy. We know Jumpy's below Bagul. But I'm going to give you some because we're going to start from quality and then go to you. Tell me better or worse. There you go. Damien Thorne. Is it better than Jumby? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's amazing, right? Yep. Damien Thorne is just an amazing name. Okay. Like that sounds like I put some... him in because it's a similar evil kid. So I. Yep. Okay. Um, Anton Fibes. <sighs> sounds like a failed fashion designer, but I think, <laughs> I think it's better. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, Samara Morgan. Better. Better. Samara is better. Yeah, right? Samara just. Samara has got a. Yeah. If, if we're sitting around a campfire and you tell me a tale about Samara, that's such a good. Yeah. Like it just it has a it's a, it chills go up my spine. That just even if I tried to not think about the ring, just the name Samara, it just has a ghost like feel to it's it. So fucking good. You're absolutely right. That just made me want someone to tell me a story about someone named Samara out of fire. That's, <laughs> that's amazing. Madman Mars. Madman Mars. Yes, because. It, it, it's sort of like when you watch cartoons and those cartoons watch a horror film, <laughs> that's who they're watching. They're watching Madman Mars. Yeah. Because it's so cheesy, so ridiculous. It, they, but it's still great. Yeah. And it sticks totally. to it. Yep. yep. Better. Krampus. Krampus is, well, it has like the historical tale mm-hmm. of it. Krampus is a, 
Just the sound of it, though. The Krampus so- and Jumbi do it. Jum- I would say Krampus is better. Okay. Not because I think Jumbi. Well, it's it is because I think Jumbi sounds fucking stupid. <laughs> That's why. Yeah, it's absolutely true. But Krampus, it just what's that? It just sounds. It just sounds like an evil German thing. <laughs> right. Totally. By the way, side note: Did we discover that every character except for the boyfriend in the Unborn, their name ends in a Y or an I? Like yeah. they're all like Romy, Jumby, Casey, right? Rabbi. <laughs> <laughs> and then my boyfriend's like Mark. Gary. <laughs> Gary Oldman is Idrissi. I- <laughs> <laughs> they're all they all line up somewhere along those lines. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't think that was a purpose or or someone's obsessed with that sound. All right, so now, here's the thing that blew my mind, because I forgot about this. When mm-hmm. I looked it up to find names to, to give you, it it listed the Babadook as Mr. Babadook. Okay. Which I forgot that he's Mr. Babadook, technically. So, Mr. Babadook or Jubby. Uh, okay, so this one, if it's the... So, here's the thing. If it was the Babadook... Yes. Which I think they say in the book, the Babadook, Duk, Duk. Yes. Uh... Babadook, when I first heard it, I was like, that is stupid. That is silly. Right, sure. But then after I saw the film and it sat with me, the I would say it like Alex would be out of town, I'm home alone, I'd be, and then the name mm-hmm. of the Babadook would come to my head. Mm-hmm. I'm like, ugh. Right. It's now, it, now I find it scary. Sure. But Mr. Babadook. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like MR period. That's how I saw it. It's like, it's Mr. like Mr. Babadook. It's Mr. like a mailbox. <laughs> yeah, like, oh, there's Mr. Babadook. <laughs> He he fixes locks on doors, <laughs> uh, but I would I would and, and mother but son, Jumby mother close, son relationships. Uh, yeah. But, but <laughs> Jumby is too close to Gumby. I gotta go. I gotta say, Mister Babadook is a little scarier. Okay, okay, fair enough. And, uh, but so, not by a lot. We're starting to we're yeah. starting to thin out. Well, I've, I'm down to my last one. So okay, because I looked at you know it, there's this weird thing that's happening where they give these un, implausible names. That for some reason, I feel like writers are like compiling like the first name of their girlfriend and their first name of their mom. And they're just making names for characters in these movies. So like unfriended, the villains like Blair Lily and, you know, friend request. It was Marina, like whatever. And these are like these unbelievable, like two first name sequences that just are like whatever. But I thought those were bad, but not as bad as Jumby. The the only one I could come up with that wasn't Bye Bye Man was from (laughs) Drive Through was was Mr. Horny. The clown. I would say that's worse. <laughs> I would say only that's because worse naming someone Mister Horny is almost <laughs> like, like I don't know who wrote it. I've not, I haven't seen the film. <laughs> it just it just sounds kind of try hard. Yes, ish. You know what I mean? Totally. Like, but at least Jumby is like, at least Jumby's looking at going. At least they didn't name me Mister Horny. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's what I right. He's like he wants to be Baba Duck. He wants to trade, but he doesn't want to trade for And no one's doing it. Like, that's, not, clown. that's a down that's a downer. You know what that reminds me of real quick though, What's, before before yeah, sure. this is I remember when they were trying to figure out like what your porn name would be mm-hmm. and it's the name of your first dog and the street you lived on. Right. And I never had a dog, so I considered <laughs> my friend my neighbor's dog and my porn name would have been Cokie High Street. <laughs> 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 Which is still better than Jumby. Which is still better than Jumby. And there we go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, all right. Well, now we know. So now we know. It, it, oh, okay. Let me but ask you But don't let the name fool you. Is He does a better job than than a lot of the... Well, let me ask you this. What's, okay, so so we mentioned Bye Bye Man. Yes. Jumby or Bye Bye Man? Bye Bye Man's worse. You think Bye Bye Man's it's worse? It's totally worse. Jumby has... The, the, the only thing Jumby has going for it is the same thing the Unborn has going for it, which is it's a little off. Like, yeah. like you can't even imagine where they came up with that or why that would be right it, to me, like bye bye man, you are, the reaction is, wow, did they come up with that? Like, why is that a thing? But the, the weird thing is that it's, it's just boring on top of being dumb. At least Jumby's not boring. It's like ridiculous enough to be funny. And Raiden from Mortal Kombat, at least totally told you where it came from. Totally. And the other thing about the bye bye man is, is, and I can't remember right now, so I'll find it while we're talking, but it, it was based on a book where the character had a much better name that they should have just gone with. So mm. not only, like, at least Jumby never had a name from a book. It's not like Jumby was named something really cool and then they changed him to <laughs> fucking Jumby for this movie. Jambalaya. Right? But they, that's what they did for the fucking <laughs> Bye Bye Man. He had a great name and then they changed it to something else. So 
Um, yeah, I'm going to give Bye Bye Man the win on this uh on this one all right well well someone someone has to <laughs> someone has to be at the bottom it, it totally you know it's, yes it's just gotta happen agreed cool. all right so just just so you people know we were trying to look up the name for the bye-bye man uh george found it it's the name of the book and what yes was- so the name of the book was the bridge to body island which is a pretty great name for a book it's kind of sinister and he is the bye-bye man in it but they went with his name because they're trying to build a character franchise right which they should have just stuck with the bridge to Body Island because Bible Man is a joke. And that name is cool. It's sort of um, the the name of that sort of rings like uh, an occurrence on Owl Creek Bridge. Totally. Like it has that vibe to it. That's absolutely what it sounds like. I kind of I kind of dig that. Yep. All right. So we were talking about Platinum Dunes. Yes. And we we were looking it up, talking about it. We even when we when we Googled Platinum Dunes, like the third list that came up was is Platinum Dunes the worst production company of all time of all of all time (laughs) jesus christ of all of cinema you are the The, worst internet could be harsh and so we were wondering like you know is where does the unborn rank in the platinum dunes body of work i can hit you with it did you ever did you ever think that's something you would say the platinum dunes (laughs) body of work i was gonna say over or whatever but i can't say that french word i just went went with body of work so it's even worse than you thought um all right, I'll do. I'll give you their body movies for their body of work. You tell me if the unborn is better, better or worse. So we'll tell each other, and then we'll see where we. We'll right. see where we think. Yeah, right. So Amityville Horror, two, Ryan Reynolds, two thousand five. I like Amityville Horror more than I, the Unborn. I like it less. So, uh oh, drama. <laughs> all right, um, and I mean honestly, I think you're right. I think the Amityville Horror is actually much better put together and a more solid movie. I just found it less scary because I it, that it was your thing. It was what you said it's try hard. It feels like a try hard movie to me. Mm. Uh, well, see, I would like it more because I thought Ryan Reynolds, like our main character's acting level, was consistent throughout, and I liked his transformation from loving father to trying to kill everyone. To the end. That's so weird because I I I think you're right. I think he's a good actor. I think people don't give him all the credit he deserves. But I I don't know. I could, that transformation just just felt like he was studied uh, Jack Torrance Shining and then Ryan Reynolds did. It's fine. It doesn't matter. All right, so, <laughs> all right, all right moving so on. Moving on. Um, Ouija, 2014. Oh, or Ouija, however you say this. Uh, the the first one. The first one. Uh, I like on 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 uh, unborn more. Okay, me too. Uh, Ouija, the second one, Origin of Evil. So I haven't I haven't seen that one, but I've seen the reviews and we've talked about it in length. Don't look around like we saw it together. We never. <laughs> no, you're right. I was thinking Annabelle Creation. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. But I would I, my my gut would say is I would like Ouija two more. I li- I thought it was better than Unborn by by a distance. And I'll probably I would probably agree with you on that one. Okay, Friday the Thirteenth, two thousand nine. Oof. Oof. I don't know why I'm I'm like thinking I'm like I'm like surveying like this. Sweating this out. Yeah, like I'm like about who wants to be a millionaire. I'm like, oh god. Phone a friend. Should I ask Phone the crowd? Um I would say that I enjoyed this more for the little bit of Gary Oldman that we got. That makes sense. I think they're about even as a movie. I, I think, could I, I I figured you I think Friday yeah. I think two thousand I think the Friday thirteenth is 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 equally scary, equally flawed. Um, I think in a scale, I don't think the scales right across from each other. And and mm-hmm. they both have like two of cinema's most annoying characters ever written in them. Cause the boyfriend, the entitled rich boyfriend in Friday the 13th remake is the biggest asshole ever. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, they, they win gold medals for that. <laughs> um, so planet, planet new to strength, <laughs> writing characters you hate. Um, Nightmare on Elm Street remake. Oof. If I love Jackie Earl Haley, mm-hmm. and I actually liked his Freddy Krueger mm-hmm. uh, more than what most people do, but I think in terms of like rewatching, mm-hmm. I would go with Unborn. Yeah, I think I I think the first thirty minutes of the Unborn are better than Nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can see <laughs> that. That tells yeah. me how I feel about the Nightmare remake. Okay, um, either of the Purge first two Purge movies. Um. I think if I had to choose, ah, shit, for the sake of premise, 
and sort of keeping the idea of it tight, mm -hmm. I'd go with Purge. Mm -hmm. if, we're, if I'm still going with what am I going to watch, if I'm flipping through the TV that I don't watch mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it came on. Uh, Friday night, or no, 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 I would go with, it's Friday night, Blockbuster's still around. Uh, I'd go with Unborn. Yeah, I've seen Unborn four times now, and I've seen each Purge movie one. Yeah. <laughs> so that's about how I felt about that. And I don't can't put my finger on it, because they're probably way better scripted. That's, what, I'm, that's what I was thinking. As I was saying, I was like, those film, the Purge films feel tighter. There's just something bland about that. Yeah, and there's, know, why? there's, it's that on and off ebb and flow that, that that's in the Unborn that, gives it like a I don't know it just gives it like a like a like a nice it's like a jagged like edge like a, yeah like a it's so weird it I, is, I, that's but, what I'm saying it's a weird effect like in my head my my, my brain's like you should hate this film I'm like <laughs> fuck you I don't hate it all right Texas Chainsaw Massacre the beginning oh unborn excellent me too Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 now let's do this hands down mm -hmm. and I will I will I will. I don't know what I'll do. I'm going to go with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I and, and it could be honestly. I haven't rewatched it since in like, geez, probably eight years or something like that. Like it's been a long time since I've since I've seen it. But I know when I watched it, mm -hmm. I watched when I first got it. I watched it a lot. Watch until the DVD stopped working, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm gonna go with that one because the Leatherface. Okay, and then so I'm gonna totally agree with you. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> I, I can't see I read your I, poker face you did but for I, some reason you don't lose it I do I don't know why I, yeah I can't I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a better movie I don't think it's great either but I think that it, you you can't be a fan of movies and not penalize the unborn for some I mean literally almost half of the movie is just really bad yeah yeah, yeah. I mean you can't escape that and <laughs> even like Texas Chainsaw like I and it, and it could be because I watched it a lot mm -hmm. in like middle school when I was just getting into like like building my horror chops. Mm -hmm. But like there's th that 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 film feels like seven or eight great vignettes. <laughs> totally. <laughs> the intro with the with the suicide. Totally. Uh, with the sheriff getting mad, you know, it just and then when they meet the big old lady in the trailer to at the end where they meet Chad Daya. Yep. And <laughs> yep. I just I just love that whole movie. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think honestly, it's partially. Um, uh, cheating because I mean it, it's like you know in the horse races when they handicap it and they put weights on some of the horses to like slow them down I mean it's it's like like there's weights on, the unborn is a villain named Jumby who's a killer kid who is part the book I, right and then yeah. the other one is one of the most infamous serial killers of all time who inspired one of the greatest horror icons of all time the handicap is too large yeah e even when you fuck it up Texas Chainsaw Massacre puts you in the mind of like summer and like horror memories and like you're you know sweating I mean? the sound of a chainsaw right exactly yeah. and, and right there's that you just see that door slamming in your eye and it's over <sighs> it's already over right so, <laughs> so that's uh, yeah I yeah. need to rewatch the film I remember the thing, well that doesn't matter now that so in the I think you and I both agree in the Platinum Dunes body work Unborn is a solid middle which is surprising because it's ten percent and we should I would actually go. Second place. Second well, you, third? you, oh yeah, I forget how you stacked it. I mean, Friday the Thirteenth, you had close. Amityville, you liked it better. Yeah, so uh, I'd say third. I'd say third place. In yeah. The well, Ouija, you would probably like better when you see it. The second yeah, one, but I haven't. So and we didn't even talk about born. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Oh, that's right. Let's bring those guys in there. <laughs> Sorry, I'm born. You are now a solid fifth. So Platinum <laughs> Dunes did the. What was it like? They 80... did the 2014, and then they did something called Out of the Shadows. Oh, I don't. I've never, never seen any mind. of this stuff. So no, like, never mind. I thought you were talking about like the old Ninja Turtle films. No, the new line with no. like the Jim Henson no. No. puppets. No. no. Oh no, Unborn. No. You're still yeah. third place. Still Congratulations. Third place. Now the big, the big uh, thing on the horizon here is, according to everything we see on the internet, and here we're days away from the release of this movie to the widescreen release, is A Quiet Place. Which keeps coming up as Platinum Dunes. Yeah. I'll believe it when I see it. But if that's true, I feel confident that Quiet Place will be the best movie they ever were. Yeah, and then if I of. if I see that and I see Ouija, then right, then Unborn goes to fifth. But not that it matters where anyone yeah, ranks yeah. in Platinum Dunes. Shit we'll body, body work, but I found it interesting because, and here's the thing: like to wrap this up is 
the thing that kind of blew my mind was when I was when I when I talked about Nick, I was like, we couldn't believe it till we started to search it. So remember, this movie Unborn is ten percent rated on Rotten Tomatoes. It's it's not. If you Googled it to see like what the consensus was, right? It the overall internet consensus would be it sucks. It's 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 really really bad, and I don't think it's really really bad. And mm-hmm. I think like like Nick is saying, it's in the top half of what Platinum Dunes has done, and. Gary Oldman just won Best Motherfucking Oscar Actor mm-hmm. for Winston Churchill. And so now you have a one of like a handful, like a hundred human beings in the history of mankind who have won Best Actor Oscars. And he's in a 10% horror exorcism movie. <laughs> and he it's he he's really good in it yeah <laughs> right and what's funny is, is is when you see like the people who aren't so good at acting and then idris alba and gary Oldman come in it's yep. just like oh and then i always forget her name and i and i, I need to remember it, the uh her the woman who plays her mother mm-hmm. anytime those people are on screen yep it's just like holy it shit. just comes to life yeah right. absolutely so um Highly weekly recommended it's not a waste of your time as long as you know that you're in for uh, three consecutive explanations of the story. Yeah, the get past that. Actually, just start at the 40-minute mark. <laughs> well, watch the opening. The opening sequence is cool. We're her jogging. Yeah, first then, first six minutes, yep. then skip to 40, and then you're good to go. Yep. So there you have it, 10%. And on I'm board. glad we're going into single digits on how low can we go on such a high note because it's probably about to get really bad. And Well, I know there's like a – isn't there like a – I know what you did last summer somewhere in there? Definitely. Maybe. Probably all of them. <laughs> <laughs> it'll be eight seven six five and that'll be we know years. that's in there and i think dracula 2 is in there and then you know i don't know i i i know that there's the disappointments room at zero so i have a hunch that the disappointments room is going to be very similar to the unborn from what i know of it but i We'll Excuse see. Me. We'll see what we get. We're there. gonna have to find out. Kate Beckinsale, great actress. There we go. All right. There we go. We, that and that and that that'll that'll do it for the unborn at ten percent. And if you loved this episode, which we know you did, because if you're at the end, well, you know why would you be here if you hated us? Are you? A- <laughs> you went through that whole journey of bad horror movies to. Well, they're not bad actually. They're good. Yeah, this was bad good. rated. Bad rated. Right. Head on over to our Patreon page where we have our interactive horror game. Tell Tell Midnight, and we switched it from Slack over to Discord, which it's, is so much better. It looks so much better. You know the thing is, we were trying to get people on Slack, and it's just it's just so corporate. Yep. And so you're like, we're gonna tell you these ghost <laughs> stories, and if you want to interact and see if you survive, head on over to Slack. <laughs> yeah, it felt where weird. you can see if Jim from Accounting's updated. <laughs> The emailing list. It was a little off, like, a, little like off. a movie we could. So we're switching over to Discord. It's way uh, more visual. There's a lot more popping. It's going to be a lot there. more fun, and and we're glad everyone who's there. We appreciate you there, and we can't wait to see other people join you. And check it out. You are going to love it, and that is Patreon.com/slash Hollow Weekly. And until next time, watch a bunch of horror movies and stay scary. Bye guys. Bye guys. Bye guys.